Welcome to game two in this best of three series in the round of 16 in winter series two between the Viper and Doubt. I'm Pesty, the founder of EGC, together here with Lidacor. Spawning in the west of the map in the color blue, we've got the Viper playing as the French. And spawning in the east of the map, in the color red, we've got doubt playing with the strongest civilization in all of aoe4 not really the abbasid dynasty so abbasid dynasty usually finding itself at the bottom of most tier lists these ways but doubt likes it and we're all very curious to see if he can pull something spectacular off right now how's the map looking looking at doubt's map i'm not really satisfied with this one for him to be honest his gold is quite a bit on the front Berries are also not really safe, and for Abbasids that hurts a little bit more because they want to build on that berry bonus that they have. He's got some choppable trees at the back and he's got a forest on front, but I feel like this gold and the berries being exposed is not ideal. And his stone mines are also quite far out on the other side, so it's going to be difficult to protect potentially both of your berries, the gold and the stone at the same time. And if you want to go for multiple town centers, you're going to need that stone. Now, an alternative approach here for Doubt would be to go very aggressive with Abbasids. I think it's a little risky against French, but I can see Spearmen and Archers combined and leveraging the fact that you have the free Infantry Siege upgrade available and just trying to go for a Feudal Age Pressure VFC in instances of that. But knowing Doubt, this will be a 2TC play. And let's take a little, little look at the Viper. I mean, to be fair, the Viper's not really in a great gold position either. Um, a little bit closer and slightly better protected being behind the town center like that, but uh, not necessarily close to the town center either. Definitely with a slightly favorable map relative to doubt, but I uh, probably wouldn't call it the ideal one. Also, those berry bushes, of course, much less important for the French player, but not particularly close to the to the town center. That being said, often French, those um, royal knights out, a little bit easier to defend the base. So, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I'd be pretty surprised not to see two TCs from Tao here, but we'll see if he's got another idea. We're certainly going to see a lot of Royal Knights coming out pretty quickly, piling that pressure on to, um, to Tao and looking to prevent that. I think the reason why Viper has to like his gold mine position, despite the fact that he's indeed quite far away from the town center, is that you can make some small voles over here in between these trees and the town center, and then potentially a tiny bit in front of this gold mine. So despite the fact that it's quite far, this forest in front helps a lot when it comes to sheltering that gold mine. School of Cavalry coming in for Viper with four villagers, as you would expect. And on the other side, Economy Wing for Doubt. And he's going on stone. You just gotta know Doubt. Doubt is one of the biggest boomers when it comes to Age of Empires. Uh, he really loves to play five, six, seven town centers just build up that economy, and it often works for him. The thing that makes Doubt an exceptional player in many situations is that he's able to stall out pushes very nicely and build up a great economy behind this one. So the majority of the players would go to town centers and die in five minutes. And what makes Doubt a good player here with these very economy-heavy approaches is that he's often able to stall out the pushes and really leverage the fact that he's able to boom on multiple town centers. Did we lose, Pasty? Oh no, I'm still here, just uh, <laughs> ruminating on the situation in front of us as we see the School of Cavalry now going down for the Viper and about to start pumping out those Royal Knights and piling on the pressure. Can't help but love to see the doubt. Uh, to see doubt, sorry. He doesn't, doesn't have other, no the for doubt um, going for that me approach. If he can somehow hold, it will work fantastic. Um... So, very curious to see if he's somehow able to pull it off. Doubt, of course, being the ultimate boomer. I think the biggest problem for Doubt is that this matchup was played in a slightly different fashion between Viper and Nushabir once again. It was Altai, Chinese versus French. But Altai is even more difficult to push than Arabia is. Ultimately, Arabia is a lot more open, a lot more raiding possibilities. And Viper was able to push that Chinese very nicely. Chinese play the town, two town center boom as well. So if Dao just goes for this one, Viper has to do the exact same thing. Go for the early infantry siege upgrade, 
go heavy on the knights and archers department and just go for a ramp push. Definitely agree with that assessment, Lidacore. Again, as always, Viper looking pretty uh, clean. I'm looking to see if he's going to get any of those royal knights out soon and start causing havoc. Of course, the one thing as we see... Training, is he still training scouts? Is he going to go... Yeah, he's training scouts and going professional scouts here, uh, Viper, which is a play I quite like, but we've now got one Royal Knight coming in. So he, he did make a few scouts prior to that. Just the one Royal Knight, so he's going to be okay um, for now defending that. And he already scouts that second TC. That said, I don't think the Viper needed to see a TC to know there was going to be a TC, Libicor. Absolutely. Just knowing Doubt's playstyle, that's already an indication. Having Abbasids also gives you some clue. But ultimately, Viper spotted the stone mine, so that should confirm that Doubt is going for a second town center even without seeing it. I think the most important thing right now is that the berries are not under the control of Doubt, though, and he also doesn't have any deer being ferried in. So once he depletes those sheep, which will be in like one or two minutes, he's gonna have a tough time accessing food, and you need some food income here with the Abbasids, even if you get the unique upgrade. Fresh foodstuffs, which is already gone. So you see, each villager only costs 25 food, but you will still need a decent amount of food income. So you want to secure those berries. Barracks coming out for that purpose, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a range from Viper. Indeed, he's already going for it. I think he's gonna do the exact same thing that he did to Nusha Bear. Go very aggressive on the Knights and Archers department and go for Ramp Push. Uh, I definitely agree with you, and that Knight Archer combination is just so hard to deal with. Um, you know, you try and make spearmen to deal with it, but they just get picked off very, very quickly by the backline of archers. So, really difficult situation. Um, I agree, Doubt needs a plan how he's going to take and defend that berry bush. Um, he's definitely going to have that in mind, but it's obviously much, much easier said than done. And so he's now putting down that mill. He's going to so he's he's trying to now take the berry bush because he knows he's got, as you said few seconds only of sheep left um but how is he going to be able to defend that when the viper comes in which he inevitably will with archers knights and a couple of battering rams to do even more damage uh, i like this decision putting up the tower for for line of sight next to him so he's going to also start looking to um gather some line of sight and defend using those which is uh probably necessary um but he doesn't have a lot of time to deal with this. The Viper, the clock is ticking, and the Viper is going to be rushing into his base pretty soon. As you said, here comes the first raid from Viper, and obviously losing one or two villagers over here will just narrow that villager gap. 32 villagers right now for the Viper, 33 for Doubt. So that two TCs isn't showing its effect just yet. Now, one of the things to talk about when it comes to Abbasids is that they are very food efficient in Feudal Age. Because they can boom on two town centers, and they only consume 50 food for every 20 seconds, so the same as other civilizations do. And they do have the berry bonus, doubt also has access to hunt, so usually this results in a ton of food piled up, and if you send a lot of villagers to gold, you can nail a pretty nice castle age timing. So, if you look at doubt's resources, wouldn't be surprised to see him piling up resources and going for an early castle age here. Viper, on the other hand, obviously has the French economy, with the cheaper eco upgrades, he has gotten survival techniques for his hunt, and he's going to have the faster training villagers on his town center. So ultimately, the two economies should be fairly even. But Viper's got army on the field that's a little more convincing than the ones from Doubt, I think. I agree. And this is this difficult situation where it's such a good composition. You've got, you have those spearmen, but they're just going to get picked off very, very quickly and easily by the archers. Actually, I, mean, I do like that. That has a couple of archers as well. Probably needs to have two or three more archers there, but he's got enough to defend in, in, in the meantime. I don't hate Doubt's position right now, if I'm honest. He is booming from the two TCs. Um, up until now, um, Viper's done minimal damage with those Royal Knights. Um, not holding strong. He's slightly out booming the Viper in the meantime with that faster production from the two TCs. Um, I, I think Doubt looks okay right now. I have to agree. I have to agree. He's already piled up the gold he needs for Castle Age. So you see, he's probably a step ahead when it comes to getting to Castle Age compared to Viper. And this is what I was referring to before. Viper is 
very very good with the early aggression on the other hand doubt is just so good at slowing down aggression and really leveraging the fact that he has two town centers 95 percent of the players in this planet would just die doing a two town center abbasid uh, play over here but what makes doubt special is that He's got a very nice instinct when it comes to placing those defensive towers and investing into just enough military to make sure that uh, he's able to hold. This being said, there goes one villager, and now Viper is like, okay, I can just take your hunt because I have professional scouts, although this scout probably is going to have nightmares about this attempt. <laughs> yeah, he got kind of crushed up against the side of that building there. Again, one villager was lost. Uh, on the whole... Now is still holding this position, and the longer he holds this, the more that Doom is going to uh, continue uh, growing the economic gap between the players. So I think Doubt's in a in a bad position here. Um, oh, Doubt! Viper coming in now, picking off some villagers with these archers, and Doubt's archers were really badly caught out of position there. That was two villagers lost. That really shouldn't have been lost if the archers had been in position. Absolutely. Um, now he's rushing up the tower over there. Doubt is on the way to Castle Age, but so is Viper. And this is one of the drawbacks that you're suffering from when you're playing the Abbasids. You have to wait two minutes to Castle Age no matter what, whereas Viper is rushing up the guild hall with nine. Behind this one, knights are bashing down villagers, and I feel like all the villager lead that Doubt was able to build up just disappears in a matter of seconds because those knights are just so good at soaking up arrow fire and ultimately killing the villagers before the tower was completed. And that is really, really painful there for Viper, uh, for Doubt, sorry, losing three or four villagers together with his entire mass. And as you said, he's up to Castle Age, um, the Viper, and Doubt a little bit behind. Now behind on military and behind on eco as well. That villager count is going to have probably dropped. In. If we could take a look, I think the Viper might likely be ahead on villager count right now. So, or basically very, very close on village account. Absolutely, but that's exactly what Viper wants. Playing one town center versus two, having an even villager count compared to your opponent is exactly what you want to have. Viper's also got a fairly sizable force, 19 versus 11, and he's got a lot of knights, which are power units. So even if it was an even army position, you would probably favor the army of Viper here. But as things stand, this is looking like a pretty scary force coming from Viper. He's got the Castle Age Knight upgrade in. No veteran archer just yet, but I'm curious to see how Doubt is going to be able to hold this one. Because now I feel like Viper is going to amp up the pressure on the opponent's base. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. And just look at how many carcasses the Viper's got there. Absolutely no pressure at all on his food economy. Um, and we've seen a, a theme in every game today that when you have an unabated economy with no pressure on it at all, it's just really, really significant, um, the, the, the difference. So a really difficult, a really, really difficult spot here from for Doubt. I wouldn't say it's completely over yet. Scores, uh, scores not looking at all good for Doubt, but um, very good play is going to try and pick itself dig himself out of this hole it's just so big as we were saying before that royal knight archer um composition uh, as i think another village is going to go down there and it does two villages in fact go down there and a little bit of it looked like a momentary misplay there from viper but he does manage to bring back those royal knights in, in time and just using those archers on the back line to great effect to pick off um, Spearman, which he's going to start doing again now, and really doubt not able to land a body blow and get those spears on top of the Royal Knights. Especially now that they've got chivalry, even when you do, unless you kill them, then it just doesn't really matter, and he's not killing any of these knights. Exactly, and behind this one, Viper is doing an exceptional job putting pressure on the wood lines of his opponent. This one at the back has one lumberjack, this one was idle for a long time, and he's just harassing from two directions, Forcing Doubt to react with what is an otherwise very slow army. It's full infantry, so there is a lot more mobility factor here for Viper. 55 versus 56 villagers, so Doubt is just simply unable to leverage the fact that he's got two town centers. And now he's forced to make farms because he depleted all his berries. And of course, 
compared to Viper, he had basically no carcasses to work with. So Viper is very far from that farm transition. He still has some berries to work all around. Whereas Doubt already has to start investing into those as well. Indeed. Um... Doubt looking for a way to get back into this as we see another confrontation here. Now, I like this, I do like this switch to Men at Arms, which I think are going to do a really good job. It's like it maybe should have happened sooner, but they're going to soak up a lot of the damage from the archers and they're going to do okay against the Royal Knights as well. So, kind of a versatile unit to use in this position. Um, might have come a little bit too late. Uh, both players in Castle Age now, as, as we were previously saying, so. A number of options still available to both players, but unless really the only thing Doubt can do, in my in my opinion, to leverage his situation in this game is somehow trying to eke out a significant villager gap at some point in this game. He's been on the two town centers. Unless he can find a way to get 10, 15 villagers ahead, he's just never gonna be able to really get back into this. He has gone up to Castle with the culture ring as well, so there is no chance to go for the camo support. That would have been an intriguing combination, to be honest. Some camos plus some archers, because those archers would have given some extra armor to yours compared to Viper's archers, and then the camos would have been decent against the knights, potentially. Not sure if it would have worked for Doubt, but right now it looks like he's going to have to build his entire strategy on mangonel shots, because he needs a way to deal with those archers, and that has to be mangonels. Viper is mixing in some arboletry as well, so he's reacting to the man at arms play of his opponent, Without a good mangonel shot, I don't think that Doubt is going to have a chance to survive this aggression. Uh, we've seen many games with a huge mangonel shot swinging the tide. I mean, Doubt does have a comparable eco to Viper. Now, if he is able to turn this around with a big mango shot, then the game is very, very much alive. And just looking at those income minute statistics very close on gold um, a bit of a wood gap for the viper food a bit more for doubt i mean it's alive it goes for the mango shot doesn't quite put it off i don't think no very limited damage done by that shot if any at all but very very close nice micro there from viper to manage to pull back away from it fortunately the hand has now also been revealed though for um for doubt in that the viper knows exactly what what he's trying to make happen here and that mango is just not able to keep up with the rest of the units tries to get off another shot but he's not quite close enough maybe he can try and dr draw his opponent in the yeah, air but viper's having none of it bringing his units back and in the end that mango didn't really do anything of significance at that absolutely point. viper is doing an exceptional job when it comes to controlling his units and now he's picking up relics going for the sacred sites once again, I feel like he's just building that lead up to be bigger and bigger. And obviously, he's going to be behind in villagers. Now it's an 8 villager discrepancy. However, you're going to have the relics, you're going to have the sacred sites, and you do have still the faster training villagers for French as well. So that villager cap won't be that brutal, and you will be able to compensate for it with the relics. And in general, just the map control, because the real thing that goes into the favor of Viper right now is that he has a massive map control advantage over Doubt. So soon Doubt is going to have to start moving out of his base. Otherwise, he's going to simply run out of resources. Absolutely. Doubt is on a really short clock here as a big raid comes in from behind. Three villagers, the god number to one shot. Uh, three uh, Royal Knights, the god number to one shot there. And the Viper right now is inflicting damage all over the map and those... Villagers, how, oh, they've got a few men-at-arms that are actually going to... Okay, the men-at-arms have taken down the Royal Knights, so that wasn't too bad at the end, but a few villagers did go down. Uh, and now Doubt goes for a big push down the middle, which is going to be seen because the Sacred Sites um, currently owned by the Viper, but he's going for a big... I think this is a good decision from Doubt, taking his only opportunity to basically win the game, which is to go and try and ex start exerting pressure right now, and a big mango shot! Oh, that did a lot of damage to those men-at-arms. Big mango shot coming in right there. Another mango shot. Oh, I just don't think that Doubt saw the first one. The mango finally does go down. Another spring olds are on top of this, and it's just a really, really good composition from the Viper. And oh, that's really, really painful. Uh, Lydical, what are you thinking? For a moment, I thought that this could be Doubt's way back into this game here because this push looked very scary. A lot of spearmen, a lot of men at arms. But with that siege disappearing from the battlefield, there is no tools for Doubt to kill those 
arbaletry and the archers, and you see the arbaletry firing from the safety this position behind their knights. They're just slowly grinding down Davos military. I really felt like this push was very scary, and for a moment, Viper probably was concerned himself that, okay, this push could hit my base very fast, but then he was able to snipe down those mangonels with the Springholds, and ultimately, these Springholds are the units that win him the game, because with those Springholds taking the mangonels down, Doubt had no response to the archers and the arbaletry, and all that infantry got cleaned up in a matter of seconds. Have you ever seen two more effective spring olds than that i did not see them come in until the last second and by that time it was too late i guess Dow also didn't see those spring olds coming until it was too late that was just pure pure pain from doubt with those spring olds coming in like that if they i agree if they weren't there that was just huge momentum there for doubt it looked really really powerful um now we have a problem now we have a really big problem because Springholds are still on the field. He didn't, didn't manage to take down. In fact, there's now three Springholds, and I don't even know what the composition is at this point for Doubt to try to, to even get back into this game. I don't think there is any, to be honest. It's almost double the population of Viper, because while this fight was happening, Viper also did some raiding on the right side, so Doubt is down to 57 villagers, 80 for Viper. So, much better economy now for Viper in every single department. He's got the map control advantage. He's sitting on uh, two relics already, and there is nothing that prevents him from picking up at least one more, potentially two, so... Army-wise, it's double the army for Viper. Eco-wise, it's almost double. And he's got map control, he's got the relics. I don't think there's a way back here for Doubt, other than Viper making an enormous mistake. It would just have to be so big now. Yeah, exactly. um, a lot of players might call GG at this point. Um... Mainly because of those spring holes. I just don't know how you deal with them. Uh, very tough situation. I think the the fans would have liked to see an Abbasid victory, but really, really hard to see that happening right now. A Viper going with the, the forward farming, which is uh, never a good sign if your opponent is putting uh, farms uh, right up there. Um, Oh, he's also going for the boars. That is so much food on those boars as well. Uh, just massive map control here for uh, the vibe that he's able to push forward and take advantage of that. And the key thing is taking advantage, as you said. He's using the fact that he's got that boar out here, which is a ton of food to work with. And if you look at that resource bank for Viper, he could go up to Imperial Age for all he cares. And he is going up. At latest, when he gets to Imperial Age, Doubt is probably going to tap out because... Doubt knows it very well that there is no way for him to beat back an Imperial Age opponent. The moment Viper appears with three bombards, Doubt's base is going to be leveled. Villagers once again going down, 58 villagers only for Doubt. In general, 89 population, whereas Viper has 86 villagers by itself, supported by 60 army. And you see, Viper knows exactly how good his position is. He's even building that College of Artillery on the battlefield, so he can get siege weapons out immediately. Oh boy, um, I guess it's one of those things here at uh, EGC, we don't like to do the um, pretense of closeness when a game is over. Unfortunately, this game is over. I think we can say there is no way back into this game for Doubt, and the only thing keeping the game going is that Doubt doesn't know that Viper is also aging behind this as a mangonel comes in from the villagers. And the spring odds start doing something. I mean, this is just brutal stuff. Um, it's one of those ones where if Doubt could have looked for one second without the fog of war and understood how far behind he is, it would be over. That being said, there's no blame here. It's sometimes very, very hard in AoE 4 with, without seeing your score to know when you're that far behind. So I can 100% see why Doubt is still going for it. He's got a decent eco, lots of villages. He's about to get some very bad news as we see Viper go Imperial in 3, 2, 1. And how very well may resign having seen that. I feel like Doubt at this point is only playing on because he knows this is the last game if he resigns. He knows exactly that this is match point. He's trying to grab some sort of... Uh, 
position here and just try to drag this game out to be very long but this seems like it's next to impossible for him at this point because Viper will soon have Imperial Age Royal Knights supported by some cannon and even Culverins or just uh, Imperial Age Spring Golds doesn't really matter because ultimately what's gonna matter is the range on those. Imperial Age Spring Golds with Royal Shadow Triggers or Culverins will stipe down Doubt Spring Golds and you see at this point, Viper doesn't even have the Imperial Age army and he's still winning this. Imagine what he could do if he already had the imp upgrades in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, very dominant. And as we often see, Viper, when he gets warming up throughout tournaments, just seems to get better every single round. Just happening here. I mean, this has been very, very clean. A little raid there being repelled really, really easily. I mean, v Viper is probably sitting there like, okay, resign already. Viper is in Imperial Age, he's at 150 population, he has the free sacred sites, and I mean, he's at 66 military population, and his opponent is 76 overall population. So, Viper pretty much has a larger army than the entire population of Doubt. Doubt has, like, no map control. And there is the GG. Viper takes down Doubt, and with that, he moves on to the next round. Doubt put up a nice effort, but ultimately was outclassed by Viper in this uh, set today, I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you on that. Um, very, very convincing stuff. Um, Viper just is that good, isn't he? He really is that good. Um, Doubt didn't play bad, and I see he's getting deeper and deeper in events, and I do think he is going to establish himself very well. I also don't bemoan players trying to win games when they go far behind. Like I think it's a good part of the game, and that's when you see, you see fantastic games when that happens, like players really try to um, win until uh, until the end. So very, very interesting stuff.